Hey everyone, this is Wei and welcome back. Now for this video, I'm going to try out this uh, new mechanical pencil that I bought from um, the store, the Daiso store. Um, it's kind of like the 99 cent store, but everything in there is, is $1.50. And all the stuff is kind of like producer made in Japan. So it's slightly better quality you know, than the 99 cent store. But they have these uh, pretty cool mechanical pencils, so it's like a buck fifty. And it comes with, you know, its own pack of uh, HB lead, and this is 0.9 millimeter. So it's actually one of the biggest one they have there. And then I also bought these um, 2B lead instead, because I think the HB is probably, that's like a regular writing pencil. I think for drawing, 2B is a little bit better. All right, so let's draw this pistol using this mechanical pencil. And I wasn't going to do this, but let's let's just go ahead and make a couple of guidelines since we're that'll probably help me a little bit um, to get things kind of straighter sometimes it is nice to have some guidelines especially if you're drawing you know something that are so geometrical so I think my guidelines are a little bit off but all right let's I mean this is just to give me some you know some form of direction so I can have a better reference so all right let's draw this pistol I'm just gonna start off Probably in the center, so I'm just gonna do the cylinder first. That's probably easier. I mean, there's a lot of way to start this, but all right, let's push this up. Let's just draw the cylinder, and then I'll, and, I'll, and then once I have this, then I can work myself a way around. So let's see, there's some details here. So let's see how this goes. I'm using this. Um, mechanical pencil so it's gonna be sharp the whole time um, but there is some softness to it this is 2B lead and it's actually surprisingly good because it's only a buck fifty so I mean you know how art supplies go it's ridiculous right so the minute the minute it's an art supply just like the prices jump like 10 times which is like ridiculous all right so let's see so I'm just kind of going across. Let's go this way uh, to measure the barrel, how far it goes out. Looks like from the, this point, probably not as far as this. So that means it's going to be shorter than this whole distance right here. That's how that's how I kind of measure things just by eye. And it works well, you know, that's just part of drawing. And you'll get more and more accurate the more you do it. It's a whole process of just measuring with visually. Okay, let's see. I might be off, but it's okay. Because I'm kind of interested in, I haven't shaded, you know, this kind of hard surface stuff, you know, for a long time. So I kind of, kind of looking forward to it, especially with the, the, the shiny surface is kind of, uh, could be kind of fun. Or it could be really daunting too, so. We'll see what it is. Okay, so uh, you see how I drew this. I, I drew the big sh shapes first, and then I went into the detail. And normally, that's the you know that's the drawing drawing process. I always go with the big shape first. So like here, uh, let's see. There's a I guess see like a curve right here all the way down. So I'm just gonna mark it. Okay, even though you know it's very slight on the reference, but it gives me you know good. Um, good overall curve which is that I can work from and then here this thing goes back kind of at an angle now you notice I didn't do the uh, what's this what do you call this the, the cock or the trigger no, no no that's the trigger I think this is the cocking mechanism right so I, I didn't do that first because this shape is a lot bigger you know so I'm gonna do this one. let's come down here and get this kind of measured out first see this goes down so it's kind of like this I'm looking at this line here this thing goes straight kind of ends right there right and then this curvature here and then this gets a little tricky uh, let's do all right, let's do the trigger let's see it comes down to this see I'm, I'm measuring how how wide this thing is right so it's kind of right around there and then now I can do you know how far it goes down so probably almost a whiff of, less than a whiff of the cylinder, so probably something like that. Okay, and then let's go 
finish this thing up. See this part here is lower than this thing. That's how I'm measuring. I see this width, this height here. Let me push this up. This side here comes, it's a little bit lower, so I know it's somewhere down here. This part goes a little bit lower, and then this goes all the way down. Probably, let's see, I'm measuring this distance all the way down to the bottom. It's probably less than double, probably somewhere like there. I'm guessing somewhere around there. All right, let's go with that. And then this corner here, if I go straight up, it kind of meets up right around here. Right around here, so it's probably somewhere around here. So, I know, I know I'm just drawing a gun, but the whole measuring process is always kind of the same, you know. Look for the vertical and the horizontal ones, because those are the easiest one to, to measure, to see, you know. Because we, we can always see if it's lined up vertical or horizontally. And then um, other things that you can help it's just angles, like if I take this angle here, going down, I can kind of measure that angle in the reference, see if it's the same slant. And if it's the same slant, then I, I know I kind of got it correct. And if I check it now, um, I think my handle is probably a little bit too, too close. It needs to be pushed further out. Okay, that's what I'm seeing. But let's just go with it, because it's not, not that important. Um, this whole drawing process is not about drawing an accurate gun. It's just it's, it's about drawing the whole thing and, and shading and hopefully make make it look uh, shiny. That's going to be the challenge. Okay, so this thing rounds out. And then now I can do the trigger. Okay, something like that. And now I can do the this cocking mechanism. There's a curve here, um, even though there's a brick here, but you know the overall curve is there. So you want to sketch that in first, and then you can work onto this. So it's always big too small, big shape too small. Okay, and then it bumps up a little bit. Okay, I think that is. So that wasn't too bad, right? I think we got it kind of close. Now there's a lot of little details. Let's go here. I'm not gonna worry too much about these things. I'm just gonna sketch it in like that. All right, so now I am using a 2B, so actually it should work well for this thing. All right, so where should I start? Uh, well, let's, let's start. I like, I like to start in the, uh, when it comes to shading, I kind of like to do the dark part first because Normally you're a little bit rusty at the beginning. Um, so you might make more errors. And if, so if you, you know, shade wrong in the dark areas, at least it's a little bit more forgiving because it's supposed to be dark. You might be able to get away with it. Okay, so now we're shading. There's a lot of little things. I'm, I'm gonna skip that. I'm just gonna try to hit the the major st stuff, so like little reflections. It's gonna be quite a challenge here. But I'm gonna try to do it as quick as possible so it's, the video is not too long. Okay, and then, so these are just basically almost like cylindrical kind of type shading, right? This is everything is kind of round, it's basically a cylinder. So it's gonna be a lot of, um, you know, like a you have a cylinder. Well, let's go this way. So here's a cylinder, and then you know you'll have the terminator there. You know, lights falling from the top, and then you might get some shading like that. And then you get this is right here would be your reflective shading. So there's gonna be a lot of this kind of shading. So it's very. I mean, it's it's, it's good because it's it's very basic. Um, but you know, a lot of. Uh, most of the stuff you sketch is always going to be some kind of geometrical element in it. And the more you understand that kind of stuff, it's just, you'll see the shapes a lot better. And eventually you'll be able to shade a lot better. Okay. So I know there's some curvature there, but I'm just going to make it straight because it doesn't really matter. So right now it's still kind of fuzzy. Um, I'll probably go in and, and turn the pencil more and get a sharper edge. 
So when I'm shading like this, my whole arm is moving. It's just not my wrist. You know, don't go like this. I mean, this is for curves. You don't do curves. Uh, whenever you're shading lines like this, it's kind of like drag your whole body. It's like my whole arm is just, and that way you you um, you get much straighter line. You know, and there will be a slight tendency to, like if I'm doing this, I try to do a straight line. Sometimes there is a tendency to curve, and you can see it because. That's just because you know you have an elbow right there, right? And you're, you're flicking it. So it is, is, but if you do it enough, I mean, you could get it straighter. So, but the tendency is there actually to, to curve this way. All right, so let's hit this area. Slightly darker here. And then this whole part on the top is darker. I'm not going to shade everything like what I see because there's a lot of little things going on. Um, I'm hoping that if I hit the, the important areas like the how cylinders work and you know just geometrically if I hit some of those areas correct then it will be convincing. It doesn't necessarily have to follow because there's a lot of little details there. No. All right. I get a sharper edge right here. Now, if I end up sketching over, you know, the highlights and stuff like that, um, I have a eraser here, an electric eraser. Uh, that'll be able to do it. But uh, I'm going to try to leave as much white as possible, just because the even the white area, obviously, is very linear. You know, it's very... And it might be a little bit... Um, difficult to try to erase out like a straight line like that unless you use some kind of straight edge as a mask okay let's see darker here let's add a little detail there so let's shade this a little bit better and the edges are darker because the light is straight on so all the, all the edge, um, the edge on this reference is, is kind of dark because you know, it's a cylinder and it's, it's, the light is not hitting on the edge right there. So you're going to get a lot of this darker edge stuff here. Yeah, this pencil is kind of cool. I mean, it's, it's, I like it that it's staying sharp because it's only 0.9 millimeter. darker in here so I can make this darker because it is receding in so it could be time-consuming you know to sketch this kind of stuff but you can see all right I got the barrel and I got the let's move on I don't want to get caught in one area too long so here's the dark area sketching it in dark this is dark now this is kind of tricky this is a very complex surface right here but let's try to shade it I'm gonna skip the little details so this is a cylinder this is a giant cylinder and then you have these indentations right so here fades out and then here is it goes dark again and then there's a little another indentation here so I'm just gonna try to read as much as possible just kind of read it and shade it without really um, trying to let your mind go blank and just just look at it and, and do it you know don't try to make sense of it because sometimes it's a, it's a little bit too complicated it's kind of like the what is it those um, those portrait drawings, remember, I think in school, they would just have you draw it upside down. And the reason is to, is to, you know, get rid of, you know, what you think a face looks like so that you can just concentrate on the shapes so that you don't end up drawing out, you know, the, the nose as a line and things like that. So that's, that's kind of the same idea. That's right here. I'm just kind of trying to do the same thing. Just let myself go and forget about what I see. 
because it's kind of complicated right here. All right, so I got that. Now let's see, there's another big shade here. It's a very, it's a very hot uh, highlight right there. So I can make this pretty dark. There's a little bit of metal brushings. Kind of like a brush and nickel kind of look. Can give it a little bit of that texturing, but not too much. Let's move on to the big shape first, because I could always add those things later on. So here's another tricky part. Uh, let's see, it's dark here. And it's really dark on the bottom, because that's the cylinder. Again, that's the edge of the cylinder. And I'm able to just turn my pencil a little bit and I, I am able to get a dark edge, which is nice. This is dark here. So I realized I kind of got rid of the, uh, the bright hot spot here, which is important. So I'm going to erase it back out. Let's put that back in, right? All right, so now this, and then you have some kind of red cylinder here. Let's just shade that in. Okay, so I think it's getting there. Uh, this thing works pretty well. I mean, I got a, I'm actually kind of surprised. The lid is relatively clean. Um, so the quality is okay, because usually if, if you get like, you know, crappy, uh, graphite lead, what happens is uh, you might get a little breakage as, you, as, you, as you're sketching. It dries out for whatever reason and it just kind of breaks off, which is really, really annoying. And that's one of the things you get with, with low quality leads. And if you know, I've been using the Steeler brand and I have never gotten that kind of breakage, but I have with other brands. That's why I kind of always stuck with Steeler. I think the one the one brand I, I tried out was uh, Dur Durvin, I think, Durvin, something like that. Yeah, and that one broke off, so I had enough of that. And it was a cheaper lead, so I think you get what you pay for. So this being only, you know, 150 I was kind of uh, expecting worse quality, but it's actually okay. All right, so now I'm shading more of the cylinders. I mean the cylindrical shading and then this part flans out so it's I'm just gonna darken it a little bit and then there's a harder edge on top again it's the cylinder fading off the edge fading off so there's a lot of this kind of straight edge shading okay darker. I'm cross hatching a little bit just so I can get a slightly even shade. Um, what happens is if you do too much shading this way, you know, it's like if you, if you go this way, everything is this way, just a lot of motion. It keeps going this way, you know, and you, and you end up creating motion that you might or might not want. So if I do this and I break it off like this, it stops that motion. You know, it, it, it even things out. Um, might or might not be good, but for most of the time, it is a good thing because you you, you know you don't want the, the viewer's eye to just like too much of this, um, you know, too much of this motion. You end up you know the eyes, your eyes end up uh, end up flying off the page, and that's a little bit more, you know, uh, it's more about composition and trying to control the viewer's eye that kind of stuff. So it's a little bit more complex. And that's actually something I really love talking about is just the, uh, the whole expression of the drawing, you know, what is it supposed to do? And your marks makes a big difference, you know, it creates feeling and that's what, to me, at least that's what art is. I mean, you want to be able to draw nice, right? But then you also want to create like a certain, I don't know, emotion that you elicit. 
So you do everything in one direction, you know, you will get that, um, that motion into your, your drawing. And that might or might not be something you want. All right. So here, let's see, this is dark, fades out. And then there's a little bit, there's a lot of edge thing, you know, going on where uh, it's basically like a bevel edge, right? And and you get a highlight all running all along. And those are kind of um, difficult areas to, very tedious areas. <clears throat> you could, um, you know, go over it with like a white paint or something later on. That's another option. So I guess that's what, what you know, one good thing about is these mechanical pencils is that you know, because it does stay sharp, you are able to draw these little things without having to, you know, sharpen up your pencil, so which is kind of nice. So I can see how this is good for, you know, more like technical stuff, like a my, more of a fine illustration, I think. I think it could work. I don't know if I <clears throat> want to do, um, a portrait using this kind of stuff because it seems like it's a little bit I don't know it just feels a little bit constraining you know when when the you know the widest mark you can get is just basically this this lead and hit harder so it's kind of developing right I mean you can kind of kind of read it a little bit better So let's get down to this big area here. Now the big areas is it's actually harder to shade, um, and it's something that I'll talk about eventually. Um, one of the way of drawing, if like especially for portraits, if you have if you guys are having problems like shading nicely, um, what you should do is just just draw a little bit smaller, you know. What happens is when you when you when you draw things too big, you just there's just way too much stuff for you to shade. All right, so I'm just gonna run this area over, you know, just kind of give it like a like a like a base coat. And you can see I'm doing it at this angle because I'm I, I think I'm gonna have to cross hatch it anyways. All right, so now I can have this area. I can go this way, so I can run it across again. And I'm very light, very light on the on my pencil. And I'm seeing some artifacts here. I don't know if it's the lead, but it could be the paper because sometimes you use uh, these kind of lighter, uh, I mean, this is just regular print paper. And the problem with that is it doesn't, it doesn't take on um, like very soft and dark graphite that well sometimes because the surface is so smooth that if you keep shading on it, it rubs off the um, the tooth, and then it won't hold any more lead. And that's why you get these really awful looking areas. All right, so there's a lot of little details. So I might finish this off screen, off camera, just because uh, I think you get the idea. Um, you know, big shapes first when you're laying out and then just really start shading. Uh, keep in mind that, that, you know, everything is kind of cylindrical and so it's really good practice and, you know, just keeping your hand you know, this way and it's really good practice too and see if you can, you know, keep it linear even though you're doing this and, you, and just keep in mind to you move your whole arm. It's not, never just a wrist thing. And then for the details, you just kind of let yourself go blank and look at it and just draw it as, as you see it. You know, don't try to make sense of it sometimes because it's really, like some of these things are really complicated. It's just a little bit too much lighting going on, um, especially these kind of chrome surface. And try to simplify things if you can, you know, don't have to do everything. And then 
Yeah, see how it goes. So I'll probably do the handle off camera because I, I think I covered the most most of the important things I wanna wanna cover for this video. All right, so here's the final drawing and I'm not gonna push it anymore because I'd rather spend my time playing the piano than to uh, try to draw something hyper-realistic. Um, but overall, I think, you know, I kind of got the overall shape and shading, so. And it's a good test for this kind of mechanical pencil, which I haven't really used before. So they're not bad, but uh, definitely reserve it for more of a technical drawing and something on the lighter side, you know, kind of like a higher key type of drawing you can't really go too dark with this especially with a 2b lid and i was getting a little bit breakage uh, when i did try to go too dark so definitely for the more illustrative style of of um, drawing for this kind of mechanical pencil and it is a gun so please do be careful <laughs>